Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com, and I'm happy to be with you here today. My sincere apologies for running late. I knew I was running really close, and I shouldn't have stopped to eat lunch, but I did. So it's just been that kind of morning, and hey, Laura, I'm glad you're here. Today is my team meeting. We're always the second Tuesday of each month. So there's a lot to do on those days and even running up to that. Hi, Marsha, I'm glad you're here. So just a quick word about my team meetings while we're waiting for people to find us and gather with us. Hi, Simone. So I have a stamping team of Stampin' Up! demonstrators and we have a lot of fun. And one of the things we do each month is we have a Zoom meeting. Hi, Vivian. So wherever you are in the United States, you can join us. Hi, Susan and Barb. And um, we have a great time. So we've got demonstrations. We have a make and take packet, which is optional. The meeting is totally free. And um, hi, Becky. And we do demonstrations. We talk about the new things that are going on with Stampin' Up. Hi, Valerie. Um, we I have a guest speaker tonight, and we just have a lot of cool things that happen in our team meetings, and that's always the second Tuesday of the month. So one of the reasons I'm sharing that is because it's happening tonight, and the other reason is we only have two weeks left of celebration. Hi, Jackie and Gail. Welcome, welcome. Um, and that means there's only two weeks left for you to take advantage of the incredible Incredible starter kit special and the starter kit special during celebration through the end of September is that you get to choose one of I think it's 12 bundles in the mini catalog absolutely free when you purchase the starter kit so I just wanted to kind of highlight that for you and uh, let you know about it I've, I talk about it frequently but I don't want you to miss out not only on the incredible deal but if you've been, even if you've been stamping for a long time and you're like, yeah, I definitely don't want to be running classes. Hi, Grace. You don't need to run classes to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. You can just enjoy your discount, enjoy the community. Um, you know, not only do you become part of my community, um, but you also become a part of the greater Stampin' Up! community of demonstrators. So that is, um, that's a lot of people to connect with over what we love, and that is stamps, ink, and paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring camera down. I have a lot of show and tell for you, and then I have something fun that we're going to make together. It is Teach Me Tuesday, and so um, I was torn between uh, what I wanted to do and what I have time to do. I think we're gonna go with what I have, what I wanna do ra rather than what I have time to do and we will just kind of, you know, pedal to the metal the rest of the day. So here we go. Uh, close your eyes for just a second until I bring you down and you get to my uh, work table. And let me just make sure that I'm in camera and you can see where I'm at. Okay. There we go, not too, too bad. So I think I am over too far here. There we go. Does that make it better or worse? Nope, I think it needs to go this way. Nope. <laughs> I'm trying to get centered. Okay, we will go with it. Um, what I wanted to start out with today is just a brief reminder about this fun class that I have um, running and you can sign up for this class. It is four really fun cards featuring the Clever Cats. This is a great stamp set and one of the reasons I really like it is because it, it gives you some Halloween, but it's not just for Halloween. And I do like, because Halloween is such a short period, I like my Halloween stamp sets to give me a little bit more bang for the buck. I keep going the wrong direction on this. Yeah, it's a mirror image and I keep, yeah, there we go. Now we're getting there. Okay. Um, I think I still need to come over a little bit more. <laughs> um, what I love about this is, yeah, you have the broom, which could actually could go outside of um, Halloween. 
cute witch's hat, very cute jack-o'-lantern. The cats, they can go in a lot of different directions and there's a lot of cat lovers. So let me show you really quick, um, just to remind you of the cards we're gonna be making. Look at that cat on the fence, is that not cute? And one of the things I try to bring you with these classes, there's the cat on the flower pot, is um, that you learn to use all the different stamps and to use them in a variety of ways. This is a little different class because you also get two treat holders. And this is, um, I actually designed this, co-designed this with uh, my friend Karina Chen up in Canada. So we have this little treat box, which is, I was so excited about because it has like a little drawbridge. So when you have it, when you have it sitting, on a table and you open it, it automatically just pops open, which is just especially fun for Halloween. So there's my little treat holder. And then the other one, you know, I showed you on camera once before. Let's go together a lot more easily than that. This little purse, and although, yes, you can put treats and things in it, I mean, it's also, it's a pretty big box. You can put a hand sanitizer in there. You can put a, a bottle of um, nail polish. You could put a, there's actually even room to put a lipstick as well. So this is a really cool box. So any, anyway, this class is up for purchase right now. You do get the two, um, we did two different videos for the treats so that you would be really comfortable in um, building these. They're not difficult, but sometimes you do have to see it. And um, I think that's oftentimes the case, something's sticking out here. Oftentimes the case with your 3D items is you just kind of need a little something more than just the PDF. So that is a $35 class. It does come with a half pack of the paper. You get these cute little sequins and half pack of the ribbon. So yeah, that is, and while I'm doing that, I just thought I'd do a little bit of show and tell with you. Um, this is how your class packet comes, and there's your paper with it. So everything is prepped and ready to go for you. And that comes to you first class mail. You can add on the stamp set if you want. You don't have to. You can use, you know, you might already have the stamp set. Um, but I wanted to just, while I was at this, before I start stamping with you today, I want to do a little bit of show and tell because Halloween is coming. And I came across these while I was in my studio and thought, okay, this is the time to really key in on um, this super, super cute, different things that we have for Halloween this year. And these are all part of a um, swap that I, uh, hosted actually I didn't just participate I actually hosted the swap so um, lots of fun things and um, unfortunately this dot not die this triple punch is actually on back order so that's a little bit of a bummer but um, lots of other things are available for Halloween and I wanted to particularly I really love the paper this year um, it's called Cute Halloween, and that's much more my speed than, um, than the Scary Halloween. Um, this paper is just so cute. This is that other, um, this is a stamp set. I guess I could get out my catalog and show you. That's actually kind of a cool stamp set because it has, um, I think it has a little bit of Halloween and a little bit of fall and a little bit of Christmas all in one stamp set. So let me just pull that for you and show you. Where'd it go? Well, I'm definitely going off uh, off script. I don't, you know me, I don't have a script, but I'm even going off the script in my head. Festive and Bright Bundle, that is on page 64. I was close. This is kind of an interesting bundle because, yeah, here we go. This is what I wanted to kind of point out to you. Yeah, Marcia, you're loving the Halloween DSP too. Oh, it's just so cute. Um, this is a cool die and stamp set because you do get a little bit of Halloween 
you get a little bit of fall, and you get a little bit of Christmas with your dies and with your greetings. So, and then they also give you a really nice label in the dies. So I thought this was a great example of that, and I wanted to share that with you. And then I also wanted to show you, this was actually made by one of my team members, and I thought it was so clever. And it's definitely a stepped up card. This is from Kathy Spears. So let me just pull these off my little workspace here and show you. She's done the cat and then popped him up three times. So there's three layers of cat on here. Really gives him a lot of presence. And then we fold open this way and then we fold open this way for a really, really over the top Halloween card. I just thought it was so clever and so fun. And let's see, I think I'm not showing you. Where am I? I'm having issues with the camera again. Am I getting in it or out? Nope, I <laughs> did Okay, I need to go farther down. Um, I just thought this was so clever. So this is definitely, this is a fun fold that I have not done. I think it's like a double Dutch door. So that will, we will have to work on that for an upcoming Facebook Live. Look at the way she's layered the designer paper with the cardstock. I just thought it was so clever. And I love the way that she's really used so many of the stamps in the stamp set. So this is all using that Clever Cats stamp set. So very good. 3D Dutch Door Fancy Fold is what that is called. Yeah, exactly, Laura. It is a wow card. And you can just, I think that when you open this up, you just kind of imagine somebody who's receiving this and they're going, oh my gosh. Oh, but wait, there's more. So super cute, fun fold card. Let me get all of these things out of the way. So that was my little... Halloween showcase. I got a lot of things going in here today. Um, okay. This is what I wanted to show you, and then we're going to kind of case this and we're going to talk about how you can case and how you can use um, color schemes and things like that. Um, color coach is in my little basket of goodies here. So this is a card that I made for some of my top uh, achievers on my team and I wanted to share this with you today because you may have overlooked this card. This is not the card I'm going to make. This is just I'm still doing I'm still on show and tell. <laughs> but this is a card made with Strong of Heart, and again, I'm going to pull it up in the catalog if I can find it. And this is a Making a Difference stamp set, which means that, here we go, this is the Make a Difference, and this is right at the very front of our holiday book, the mini catalog, and this is isn't this a lovely, lovely card right here and different things that you can do with this. And Stampin' Up! is giving back. So they send a portion of the pro proceeds for this to support heart health. So I know that last year in the mini catalog, I think, um, I think we had a stamp set and proceeds went to maybe mental health. I'm trying to remember. Um, might have been to foster kids or something. This one is for heart health, so you have a heart stamp set. Very appropriate. I will say on Making a Difference, we actually have one of our team members, Alicia Fawcett, heads up our Making a Difference. So Stampin' Up! does this um, as a company and they encourage us as individual stampers and as teams to also do things to make a difference, to give back to our communities. So Alicia uh, actually heads that up for my team of Southern Sweet Stampers, and we do a giving back every quarter. And this quarter, we are um, helping to support a, um, a local foundation, I think, uh, organization that helps 
foster kids who are exiting the system and stepping out on their own. And we do that with handmade cards. We, we send cards to them and some of them we add gift cards to, little $5 gift cards to help them. And um, so that making a difference is something that we do as a team and it's something that Stampin' Up! really encourages us as well. Um, so let me just show you. This is another card made with the same uh, stamps, and I love this because this demonstrator, this was a part, this was a swap, and this is heat embossed with the gold. And isn't that pretty? So very kind of similar layouts in some ways, but a very, very different look based on different colors. So there's a lot of versatility here. And um, so I wanted to show you that, and I'm gonna kind of case that one. And I don't need this, let's see. But I wanted to also show you, I cased myself on, on another card. So this was my simple and stepped up last, uh, last week. This was the simple. So I made for my top five achievers, uh, my top five sales girls, I did a stepped up version and I used, I stamped tone on tone. And this is that stamp set that is a celebration stamp set. And it gives you all these fun background things that you can do. So I just wanted to kind of show you how you can take a card and then case it. And that's exactly what I've done here you know, sometimes when I'm thanking you guys for purchases and things like that, sometimes I'll tuck in, you know, a couple of cards. Well, that is got a double um, intention, a double purpose. So yeah, you get a cool card from me, but you also get ideas. And that's what these are really, really good for is ideas. So I wanted to show you, um, that where I was just kind of casing myself. And now I'm going to case myself again. And I'm gonna do things a little different here. So let's see if I can get my act together because I ran late. So let's see, what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to show you how you can use this die in such a way that's not um, that's unexpected or maybe um, not what you would think for lack of a better term where are my original cards for this class let's see give me one second I have put those oh, I was working on PDF tutorials they were over here and what did I do with them? Hmm. Well, that could just send everything awry. I'm trying to show you the cards that I'm making with my class and show you different ways to use them. So maybe we're gonna go a little different direction. Hey, there's Kathy right there. And she is the creator of that amazing Halloween card. Okay, so what can I do with this and this? You, you're gonna wonder what I can do. Well, look at what happens when you run this die through with this free paper. So this is that gorgeous, gorgeous, be dazzling designer series paper. Again, this is, or specialty paper, this is only available through the end of the month. So make sure this is free with a $50 order. You can't buy it, but you can get it for free. So you can run this through and make a gorgeous, gorgeous die. Uh, let me show you what that looks like when you put it on a piece of cardstock. I mean, that's a lot of glamour right there. And you can see how, that's the way I did it on a couple of cards, which I can't seem hi -yi -yi, to lay my hand to. Oh, did I just find them? Well, I may have found them. See, I tuck things into little spots and think, oh, that's a good spot for that. And then I can't remember where I put it. Okay, so that right there 
would be really, really gorgeous. And maybe that's just the direction we will go. I was going to show you something a little bit different, but maybe we will just go with this. Oh, Corinne, you're here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for sharing my, um, my video. That helps me so much. Okay, we're going to play with this a little bit and see what we come up with because what I was had in my mind, I can't find the cards to kind of show you the difference on. So let's just see what we can do. I will show you because I think I have it. Let's see. Okay, can you, let's see how many mishaps you can make in one day. I've okay, got too many baskets going. Let's see. This is the color scheme that I'm looking at right here. So I'm looking at using cinnamon cider, great color for fall, with cherry cobbler and crumb cake, but I'm also gonna probably bring in a little bit of this early espresso. I think, let's see, is that gonna be better? Not really, let me turn this light out. Ha ha, now that looks better. Okay, it was kind of bleaching out the color. I know I'm giving you some shadows, but I think, you guys let me know if that's better or if that's worse on lighting. Um, so this is where I'm gonna go, here and here and here, and I need a little bit of crumb cake, and let's see what we can do. already got this little guy stamped and cut out so I might use him okay so what we're gonna do is let's start with our greeting because I love 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 the greetings in this stamp set and they are <laughs> I can't even find the stamp set Lord have mercy Ah, I just found them. Woohoo! Okay, just keep walking around your studio, Candy, and you'll find them. So I haven't found the stamp set yet, but I did find the cards for this class. And this is what I was wanting to show you is that you this die is really gorgeous, and it, it's just kind of made for, um, oh, thank you, Corinne, for letting me know that the uh, lighting is better. It's really made, I think, for specialty papers. You can use it with um, cardstock, which is what I did here. And it really is beautiful, but I love it when you use it on specialty papers. So this is where I went here. And look at that, isn't it gorgeous? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do something that is a little bit um, shocking. <laughs> let's go rogue today and let's chop that baby up. Okay, here is this. And let's do a layer on top of this with some more cardstock. Grab, this is what I need right here. I want that cinnamon cider right up against, actually, let's see. Let's get some more cherry cobbler. I'm going to make a panel of cinnamon cider. So I'm going to grab five and a quarter by four is our kind of our typical panel. And that gives us a lovely little piece to work with that will be just tucked inside. It's like a little mat 
layer inside my um, cherry cobbler card base because I'm wanting to really bring in those fall colors. We're having just a wee bit of a little a little hint of fall here. I know depending on where you are, some of y'all are already having mega fall, and I'm terribly, terribly jealous. But that's you know that's for another that's another thought. Now I'm going to bring this down to five, and then I'm going to make this a two-inch strip. Linda, you're late. Well, let me tell you, I I ran late, and I ran more scattered than typical because I couldn't I couldn't lay my hand on the cards I wanted. Now let's see what we can do here and let's see if we can just kind of go rogue a little bit. Feeling daring today. So let's grab these scissors here and let's put a little bit of work Paper, the grid paper, which is a real workhorse. It gives you not only just a place that you can ink up and get dirty and everything, but it also gives you all those really important lines so that we make things straight. So that is going to come together ever so nicely. Okay, so now I have this here and I have this. I think I am going to run this through our big boss. So you're in Fredericksburg for oh, 53rd anniversary. Oh, awesome stuff, Linda. That is truly amazing and awesome. And you're making cards because you can, and it's so fun. I'm gonna use this new Timber 3D embossing folder. And one of the reasons I'm going to do this on camera, I oftentimes don't do this kind of stuff on camera because I, I know it, it kind of bugs me because it, well, it takes up time and it also just kind of gets wonky on the table sometimes. But we're going to, we're going to deal with that. One of the reasons I wanted to do this is because all my pieces here, because, um, you don't realize that when you're using these 3D embossing folders, this is the platform you need. It's the only one that you need. It's set number four. So this is what you need, and I am going to run a piece of, I just cut it. It is cinnamon cider is my base. Now I wanted to show you a couple of things before I run this through. First of all, even though this is a wood grain, it's very linear. So you're either gonna have your wood grain going in the uh, portrait mode, or you're gonna have it going in the um, landscape mode. And my card is a vertical card. And I think honestly, it looks good either way, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with it there. This little line is there so that you can line up. Now you don't have to line it up right on the line, but it does give you a point of reference because you don't want your wood grain, it is a linear pattern, you don't want it all cattywampus, you know, you don't want it all looking funky. Um, now wood grain is a little more, um, I mean if it was a little bit crooked, it wouldn't be a big deal, but if you have something like an argyle or a, um, like a, um, well anything with lines, argyle or a plaid or anything with lines it, it wouldn't do so that is why that is there and you always want to put your fold in first and then that's all I need is that little gray um, that gray plate and that gives me my 3d embossing let me move my big boss out of the way so I've already cut my little um, my die. I'm bump this, move this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some color 
to my embossing folder. I will tell you one of the other reasons I wanted to do this embossing folder with this is that on my team, we also run creative challenges a couple of times a month. And the one we just, uh, we just started is using embossing folders. So that is, that means I can enter my creative challenge on my team page. I don't run it. Um, Crystal Wilson runs it for me and I so appreciate her, um, her dedication to that project. Now all I'm doing is I'm using a, um, <laughs> Lord have mercy candy. I'm using a sponge dauber. And I'm just adding a little bit of tone on tone. This is cinnamon cider on cinnamon cider. But look how it brings out all of the detailing on this embossing folder. Now, one of the things that you can do with all of our embossing folders, I think it particularly lends itself to this one, is you can use either the embossed side or you can use the debossed side. And that is gonna give you a different look. It's a more subtle look. Um, and it's more smooth, but honestly, I like them both, and I've been using them both. Now, yeah, I just kind of messed that up. See what happens when you don't, when you, when you, when you just take your sponge dauber and you daub it there. You need to actually start over here and then work your way in, so that you get those nice, rich colors and you don't get blobs of ink. So for this particular one, I'm just gonna go ahead, you see how it actually comes out darker on the debossed side than the embossed side? I'm actually gonna go with the embossed side on this one. And I'm only going to do this color. Well, I don't like the way it came out there. So maybe I'll just do the whole thing and then decide where I want to position this on my card front. And you could just use your blending brush as well. Some of you may or may not have a blending brush yet, or you may not have enough blending brushes. You know, the thing about our sponge daubers is there's five, they're $5 for a pack of five, and you can just do a whole lot with them. So I think that I've got a little bit of splotchiness, but I think it's gonna be okay. Because there's gonna be a lot of other things going on with this card before we're done. We're gonna go over the top over the top with a fall card today. I do want the edges to be really nicely done because they're actually gonna be peeking through a fair bit. So let's go with a little bit more here. And then let's layer that up and see where we go. So that is going to go onto my Cherry Cobbler card base, which is still here, yay. And that, is going there. Aren't those deep, rich colors? I love rich colors. So there, now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to actually chop this, because you can see how it really dominates, and I, I don't want it to dominate. I actually just want to have some of this. So I'm going to um, cut this down. Did I already do that? No, I don't think I did. No, I haven't done that yet. I'm gonna cut this down to two inches. And I'm going to have a five by two inch piece to go on the side of my card to give a lot of um, punch. I want, to have a, I want to have more of this cherry cobbler because uh, I don't want the cherry cobbler to dominate and I don't want the cinnamon cider to dominate. I actually need, whoopsie, not very good. Aye, aye. <laughs> that fell off the shelf. Um, I don't want either one to dominate. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to place this like so and we're gonna cut. <laughs> is my, oh, this is a brand new one. This is my green glue, is what some people call it. Um, this is my green glue, 
otherwise known as Tombow. Now I'm gonna kind of bring this in so you can see what I'm doing. Now I could use just a little sponge and use just a tiny bit, or I can just kind of go along the leaves here because I'm not totally sure where I'm gonna place this yet. So I'm trying to be sparing with my glue, but have enough of it where it will stick. I can always pop some more on. Now, the other thing you could do with this, and I have done this with this die and it works beautifully, is to run this through your Big Boss with the adhesive sheet behind it. The one thing I will tell you when you're using this really intricate dies with the adhesive sheet is you may have to run it through more than once in order to get it to cut through. The adhesive sheet does add an extra layer of thickness. So now I am going to, yes, I am going to chop these right off. Now I can use these on another project, but this is going to allow me to have all of these gorgeous, gorgeous leaves, but not where they're the only thing on my card. So I'm just going back to the background and snipping those bits and now let's see what's it going to look like now look now you see where i'm going now i have more of that cinnamon cider or uh, cherry cobbler peeking through but not where it dominates the entire card i wanted to have a few other things in there i think i'm going to use um crumb cake for my greeting this is kind of the color scheme that Stampin' Up! has given me. Because I think if I bring in cinnamon cider, it's gonna to be too much of a good thing. But maybe we'll try both and see where we get on. Either way, I know I'm going to frame it with um, early espresso. And I think that rather than stamping it with early espresso, I think I'm gonna actually stamp it with cherry collar. this and I think I want about two and a quarter by two and a half where'd my little greeting stamp go here we go okay so that is yeah two and a half by about two and three quarters. So let's start there, two and a half by two and three quarters, and we might bring it down just a little bit more. So there's two and a half by two and three quarters. It's already there. And let's see if this is even big enough. Two and a half Ooh, there. by two and three quarters. Now you can already see how this is coming together with kind of a glamorous fall look. I'm going to need to bring this down just a little bit more. But I want to see if I'm going to go with this or with this, with this underneath. I don't know. I think I like that cinnamon cider. I think it might just work. Hey Penny, thank you so much for sharing my video. That helps me so much. I appreciate it more than I can say. Let me grab the other option I could do is I could throw a little bit of vanilla in here. Ooh, that might be really nice too. So let's try that. And we just might bring, we'll have choices. And sometimes when you can't decide, it's good just to stamp them all and then decide. So let's do that. I've got one, two, three of these that we are going to try out. This lovely, lovely greeting. So let's see. The changing of the leaves reminds us that new wonders are just around the corner. Isn't that a lovely thing to just encourage someone with? To just highlight the beauty of the season can't really tell if I got that straight. Yeah, I did. Pretty good. 
Okay, let's try again with the vanilla. And this is such pretty scripty font. It's like somebody's just handwritten it, um, which I love. I will say the letters or the kind of the writing is quite thin, so it's not a heavy, it's not like you used a magic marker when you were writing. So let's just see. And we haven't stuck anything down yet, although I think I probably could. So this is gonna go here and like this, and we are going to have this, it will be cut down some, but this is gonna be our um, frame. Now, do we like it with more cinnamon cider? It really makes, I will say it makes this really, really pop. Or is that maybe too much cinnamon cider? Let's look at very vanilla. Really lightens everything considerably if we go with the vanilla, but that's a lot of contrast. Or let's see if we go a little bit softer and go with the crumb cake, and then we have some contrast, but maybe not quite so much. So while you guys are thinking about this, I'm going to trim down my, this is a little bit too long, so let's go with, I think this is at two and, that was at two and a half, so let's go to two and three quarters. Let's do this at three. Then I think we're going to have, okay. Okay, this is what I like. People start weighing in. Okay, we got a couple of votes. Ooh, several votes for cinnamon cider. Look at there. Look at there. Cinnamon cider. We got a little bit of, uh, we got a little bit of voting here for, it looks very cohesive. Um, we have a vote or two for very vanilla. And then we also have a vote or two for the crumb cake. So I will say that the um, cinnamon cider is definitely winning the vote. So let's go ahead and start putting some of this down. And then this is not going to need much embellishment at all. I am gonna put just a tiny bit and I'll show you what I'm thinking and we'll see if you're thinking what I'm thinking. <laughs> So this is just, you know, one of the things I have found about this Be Dazzling paper is, to me, it is best used in small amounts. Now, this is a pretty hefty amount, but not compared to what we started with. So we brought it right down by chopping it. And also, it has that kind of very loose leaf, um, very uh, casual aspect because it's like a big clump of leaves. Make sure I'm going in the right direction, there we go. But here we made it a much more linear image so that instead of being very, um, let me get you here. here here's, the whole, here's the whole one here. So you see how it's very, um, very free form, I guess is what I'm looking for. When you cut it on a straight line, it, um, it really kind of changes the look. And yes, you're right, Corinne, a little goes a long way. So I don't mind covering that up a little bit and bringing it more into the background than in the foreground. So this, I just have my little matte image here for my focal point, all about the leaves. So let me grab some dimensionals to put that down. I'm liking it a lot. Definitely a fall color scheme, very rich, rich colors. I am going to grab my black dimensionals. This is when these really come in handy. You don't have these black dimensionals, I encourage you to get them. Um, I don't use them nearly as frequently as I do our white ones. But when you're using something dark like this, it is nice to have this dark because you'll see it sometimes like picking out from the side when you turn the card, when you open the card and things like that. And yes, Jackie, I agree with you. You like all the fall colors of cardstock. We have some amazingly rich fall colors and I love that they're very versatile. You can do a lot 
with our colors that are considered fall. So you can kind of bring them into winter. You can use touches of them in, even in a spring um, design. So that is where I'm going. Now I do think it needs just a little touch of something and I'm gonna ask you what you think about this just to kind of soften it up a little bit. I've got very vanilla. <laughs> I've got very vanilla lace ribbon. Let's see what we think. You know, this is kind of a champagne color, so why not have a little champagne and lace with our fall leaves? Let's see. Will this, yeah, this will. So, what do we think about a little bit of lace? I don't need these to be very long at all. So, we can do a little bit of lace at the top. Really makes it look super, super feminine. What do we think? I definitely don't want to add any um, like metallic dots or anything because it's already got a lot of bling factor on it. Now there is something I could consider and I'm also going to get this ready for the inside because when you have colored, deeply colored cardstock like this, it's very difficult to write on the inside. So I always like to do a panel and I'm using very vanilla because I think, again, very vanilla goes with this much better than basic white. So I'm bringing in one of the other images from the stamp set, these lovely, lovely images. And this is the Beauty of Tomorrow stamp set. Oh, there's the stamp set right in front of me. I couldn't find it because it was right in front of me. Okay, here's the stamp set right here. Oh, and I found that little, oh, I have that bird. Oh, yay. I forgot about my bird that I had previously stamped and die cut, and he's in the right colors and everything. Now, I'm gonna stamp this off first, and then I'm gonna stamp it right here, and that is gonna be for the inside of my card. Oh, look how pretty. Oh, look how pretty. I love it. I love it. I love it. I don't hear anybody weighing in on my, on my bow. Do we like the lace bow, or do we not like the lace bow? Maybe if I add the bird, we'll make a firm decision, and then we will be done with using, this is really, this is my Teach Me Tuesday, and really this is about using the dies from Beauty of Tomorrow, as well as the um, Be Dazzled, Be Dazzling paper in maybe some unexpected ways. Okay, so everybody's thinking the bow might be a little bit too much. And, but what about this little guy? Do we wanna add him? What do we think about the bird? The bow's too much, is the bird? What about if we put the bird like right there? We can put him at the top, we can put him at the bottom. Let's see if anybody likes my bird. We definitely don't like the lace. So I jettisoned that. And you know, I was gonna try to find those other little dots just might work. Let me see. Can I lay my hand to them? I was designing up here earlier, which means I have stuff everywhere. <laughs> and I know you can relate because it's just kind of the way that we do. Okay, we like the bird. The bird is good. So here are the other dies. I couldn't find them. Oh, see, I could probably could have cut out a few of these. Ooh, we might have to do that. I don't know. Maybe I'm just gonna make it too fussy. I thought these just might work. I could put a couple of these dots on here. Let's see. What do we think? Do we like little dots like that or should I leave them alone? Tell me, tell me, tell me what you think. Do we like the dots or do we not like the dots? I'm going to grab a mini, a couple of mini black dimensionals for my bird. Let's put one over here. Okay, the dots are working. We have votes for the dots. I will tell you that I oftentimes struggle to use the colored embellishments. I tend to do better with like the shiny 
colored rhinestones fine, but like these matte dots, I tend to struggle with them. So I think that I just kind of found why I struggle with them and why I don't have to struggle with them. Oh yeah, I like that. Is I think the key is using them when you already have a lot of, um, you already have shine, so you don't wanna add more shine. And that's when you want to just add a little bit of, oh, I think I like that. What do we think? What do we think? Not crazy about the dots. Okay, Betty's not crazy about them. Yeah, they might make it a little bit busy. Now that I'm looking, you know, it's good to look at the camera because it kind of tells the story. Maybe I don't need three. Maybe I just need one or two. And maybe I don't need any at all. Yeah, it looks, now it looks, if I have one, it looks like it doesn't belong. Okay, maybe we're just gonna go with the bird. I do like the bird. Oh, I know one more thing I can do. <laughs> See, this is where I get in trouble. Oh, and I did have, there's a bird out of vanilla, but yeah, I think that's too, too much. I like him in, um, I definitely like him in the, um, could I add a little piece of twine? Should I add a little piece of twine? No, I think I need to leave it alone. Sometimes I wanna keep going and it's, it's just, it's there. I think we're there. What do we think? A lovely fall card that's a little bit on the different side. So we've got a lot of texture here with our timber embossing folder and we added color on color with it. A lot of cinnamon cider in here because we use cinnamon cider on our focal, on our um, stamped, our uh, greeting. And we also used it here. And then on the inside, we have this a little bit more cinnamon cider. And see, it's pale enough that you can write right on top of that. I do like that. Reminds me of old cards and old stationery. So that is it for today, Teach Me Tuesday, using the Beautiful Leaves dies in an unexpected way by chopping it. And instead of using it the way with its full on like this, which is another beautiful look, another way to use it is to chop it and uh, create a totally different look by putting some linear, um, some strong lines around it to give it a little bit more, a little bit less free form and a little bit more of a tailored look. So I so appreciate you stamping with me today. Thank you very much for your patience because I was kind of all over the show. I think because I was just running late. Not a good, then, then, I'm, then my, my mind is more scattered than usual. So this is a part of, um, these dies and stamps, this bundle is a part of my Cards with a Twist class this month. So if you're getting Cards with a Twist class, or if you just happen to have the bundle or are going to be ordering the bundle, I just gave you another idea of how to use this bundle and using it in a really different way. I will say as well, I think that this color scheme and I think especially, I, th I think because of this champagne leaves on here, I think you could also make this into a beautiful anniversary card. You would wanna have a different greeting, but I think this would make a lovely anniversary card for somebody who had a fall anniversary. So there we go. Beauty of tomorrow. The changing of the leaves reminds us that new wonders are just around the corner. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me here. I appreciate your... Okay, sorry. <laughs> I hit something by accident and it kind of, um, it stopped my feed for a minute. So that is it for today. And um, if you have not already signed up for my Beauty of Tomorrow uh, stamp class by mail, it's Cards with a Twist. I would love for you to do that. I also have my Clever Cat clever cats class by mail going and let me know if you would like to join my team meeting tonight on zoom you can do it from anywhere in the u.s 
So let me know if you'd like to join us. We do, the meeting starts at seven o'clock central time. So if you're on the east coast, it's eight o'clock. And if you're on the west coast, it's five o'clock. And if you're in between on mountain time, it's six o'clock. We do open the team, that we open the meeting room 30 minutes early so people can just visit. And um, no obligation, just come at, and just hang out with us and see what we do, kind of behind the scenes of Stampin' Up! Demonstrators. Uh, you'll probably see some folks on there that uh, you already know, and you can stay for as long or short as you're able to tonight. So if you would like to join us, just PM me and I will send you the Zoom link. I can't put that out here in like, you know, public space because then we could have, who knows, some, some stranger coming into our meeting. <laughs> so that's it for today. I will be here on Thursday for simple and stepped up stamping. Thank you so much for all of your design help with this lovely fall card. It's almost here. Fall, fall. I can't wait. Thanks so much. Take care and God bless.